Hey guys, how you guys doing? Today we are going to take a look at a called Carbon OS. Now, what is Carbon OS? Carbon OS is what is an immutable distribution. So you got Silver Blue, you got Vanilla OS, Carbon OS, and I believe there's another one coming out called Blend OS. And they're all the same. And what they are is they're basically made for developers to use. And so uh that being said their 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 main thing is that the core system files are never really touched uh they usually update atomically um silently in the background all of its own and it just does its thing when you reboot it it installs the updates now the reason why developers prefer this is because they build their packages and their stuff on top of this OS so that that way they know that it works flawlessly for whatever OS they're working on. And usually like F silver blues, fedora, vanilla OS is a gnome one. And, uh, so is carbon OS. It's gnome based, uh, gnome OS based. Uh, so either way, just, you know, know that you, that, that it's basically, going to be where they're the repository for you to use if you decide to use this as a daily driver which i guess you could i mean you know you're going to download stuff from flat packs you know like flat hub app images that kind of stuff because that's what these developers that use these distributions usually do so let's go ahead and take a look at it so all i've done with it before we start uh, all i've done with it is i've installed or downloaded the os and I'll put a description down below and, and you know, in, I will put a link in the description down below uh, of where uh, I got it from. Uh, spun it up in my virtual machine because uh, I know I'm, I, I said I'm going to start installing onto hard and bare metal and I am. But this one, when I go to install it, it just crashes. It, the, it gets to the grub part to install the grub bootloader and, and it just fails so i don't know what the problem is i don't know where where their issue is is on that but for some reason on the installer it's not working so let's go ahead and take a look and this is literally just booted up fresh into the vm into the vm i've given it four gigs of ram four cores of my processor so lower spec units can 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 you know test drive it as well uh, and you can see that they can so here we go let's go ahead and take a look at it and here we are. This is uh, when you first boot into it, exactly what it looks like. So I'm going to click English because that is the language I want. Next. English US. Yep, that's exactly what I want. Uh, disclaimer, this is an early development build of Carbon OS. Please be aware that breaking changes may still occur. Yes, because it's still in like beta. So it's not even close to alpha, I don't think so. But either way, yeah, just know that it can break. There could be some bugs in it. And now we're going to go ahead and try it. Well, this is kind of nice though. Let's touch on this because you can try it, you can install it, or you can repair. So if you keep it around as a bootable disk and you have a damage, somehow you somehow manage to damage your core files in as a, of it as a daily driver then you can always click to repair here now so let's go ahead and click try let's see how are you going are we not going what are we going to do oh there we go and so here it is this is your this is your standard um vanilla gnome so uh, I don't think there's going to be any frills or spills here going on that um, that they've done to it. Uh, so far, it looks like it's just your standard regular GNOME 43. Um, let's see here. So you got your activities over here, which uh, is where you click here to get to this taskbar, and you get to your programs right here, which we'll take a look at in a minute. And then in the middle, you have your date and time. And of course, any notifications that will be here. And if you want to add a date, you can do that. If you want to add a clock, you can do that. And you can even set your weather location. So let's see if that actually... Whoa. Oh, there we go. Mm, I'm going to do Tacoma. We'll go to Tacoma. Tacoma. There we go. 
And there's the hourly, and then there's the daily weather right there. Wow, kind of cool. So now it's populated down here. So that's nice. And that actually worked. That is cool. Uh, then you've got, of course, your date and time here, which is April 2nd. And as far as the time is concerned, uh, it is not 4 p.m. So apparently it's not adjusting to the um, time on the Internet. You have to go into your settings and adjust it probably. Over here is your hidden tray menu. If you click on any of these, it will open it up. As you can see, it's all the same. So it's kind of a, a misleading thing that if you want to click on this power button over here, then it's going to turn off your system. No, it's not. It's just going to open up this hidden tray menu. So that in and of itself is kind of weird. Just not why not put in like, a, like they got the activity. Sorry. Like they have the activity over here. Why not just make one over here that's tray? You know what I mean? I, I don't understand one icon or something. But either way, uh, you go here and of course here you've got, you can get to your settings. So it's like a quick panel menu. And this is GNOME 43, by the way. It's not the new GNOME 44 because the new GNOME 44 has added a whole lot into that. So you have, uh, of course, network. Uh, let's go down here to region, date and time, which is weird that it's not alphabetized, but it's okay. So automatic date and time. Uh, my time zone. Ah, oh, that's why. That's true. It didn't ask me for a time zone. So let's click that and we'll hit OK. So that's kind of cool. You can find out it's four o'clock over in London. And so now we're there. Time format is 24. We're going to go AM, PM. And now that is correct. Now my date and time is correct. So anyhow, so you can go to settings. You can take a screenshot here. You can adjust your volume. As you can hear it. Right there, you can select your your type of uh, connections that you have. Uh, also, you can select your power power uh, mode. And also, right here is nice. You can select your dark theme and awake theme. And then I guess it's got caffeine installed because it's or a stay awake function. I don't know which if it's exactly caffeine or not, but it looks like caffeine. Uh, it's got the little mug that comes on. It's got the steam coming out, let you know that it's activated. And so there, yeah, I mean, so so there's that, okay? Now, we go to the activities, and we go down here. You've got Epiphany, their web browser, which if you look at it, I mean, it's all right. It's nothing special. This is it. Like, that's it. Welcome to the web. Start browsing, yada, yada, yada. I mean, I guess it went to the default page because they didn't they haven't loaded like their carbon os page in here or anything like that that it opens up to or their support or whatever like most distributions do most distributions will um make their support forum a start page or whatever but it doesn't do that so but we can look up mexico and it uses DuckDuckGo for its search engine, so it's using a privacy-based search engine right off the bat. And there you go. You can go to Mexico, uh, Brazil. You know, you can check all this out. So anyhow, yeah, it does the does that. And let's see about web, which is Web 43. Yep, it's the 43, the GNOME 43 suite tools. So yeah, I mean, very. Very, very simple epiphany to web browser. Uh, then, of course, it's got files, which is a GNOME file manager. And it's going to be 43 version as well. 43.1, correct. Uh, credits. The GNOME project. Yep, it's the Nautilus. Original Nautilus, that's right. I mean, there's nothing special here to, to, really, to really see. I mean... Everything's empty. There's nothing there. I mean, I mean, you go to other locations, of course. You got the OS. You go to the Etsy. And you've got, you know, regular regular, regular file, file manager functions. So nothing big deal. Uh, then you've got the software center, which is obviously going to be the GNOME software center. If you haven't seen it, there it is. That's what it looks like. And software repositories, you have flat packs installed like i said <laughs> and of course the linux vendor firmware service testing firmware service so there you go so that is the software center which is nothing you know really surprising there and of course the installer which looks like what we had before this is the dark version so next
disclaimer, and then of course you select your disk and then you hit next and it's going to want to install and I don't want to do all that crap. So no worries on that. And then for other applications that it might have that we didn't see through the cursory r run over overview of it, uh, it's got Geary, uh, which is your uh, mail client. If we click it, say, welcome to Geary to get started, select an email provider down below. And then, so there's that. Uh, there has your contacts. It's got your weather app, which we did, clocks, the calendar. Oh, they've got the extension manager. And so let's see if we can install any extensions. That what that they added, so that's kind of cool. So we're gonna hit browse and um extensions. Okay, it's installed. So now we go here, it's populating the extensions list. What that didn't quite work now, did it? Okay, so let's try this again. No system extensions install. Open home extension manager. Da 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 da. We're gonna hit remove. So now let's see if we can browse another one. So let's go under. menu formatter media controls we got arc menu load more results uh, lock keys quick language switch bang wallpaper and here they have caffeine but it's already installed up here that's wild um Glossium block caribou 36 UTC clock uh, simple subscriber bedtime mode let's try that see if that works and it doesn't work either so yeah so <clears throat> why did my color get all messed up Oh, because it's on. I turned it off. No, it's not. Wow. So I guess it did work. They added it right here at the at the toolbar. See, now it's bedtime mode. And now I don't think anything really works. Oh, no, it's just everything's grayed out. Well, that's a stupid extension. I'm sorry. I don't see the the value in that extension. That's crazy. That's stupid. All it does is grayscale everything. Like, there's no color. There's no nothing. It's like... I don't get it. Is is that supposed to be like the daytime versus nighttime filter? I don't get this stupid extension. That is a dumb extension. Anyhow, yeah, so it's there. Don't worry about it. Uh, Whatever. Uh, yeah, so extensions do work. They just have that null report thing that happens when you go into the extensions list to try to maybe adjust settings. It doesn't retrieve the settings for it or something. I don't know. So anyhow, so there's so there's that. There's a system monitor, which let's see, it shouldn't be using very many resources at all. And uh it is not. It's not using very many system resources at all. It's pretty light. It's using collectively, you know, what, maybe eight ten, fifteen percent of my monitor of my CPU, hardly one point six gigs of RAM, hardly any of it. So yeah, it's it's a it's pretty light but of course it's vanilla gnome there's not a lot to it as you can see it's got the regular text editor for their plain text editor which if you open it up it's like i don't know mouse pad leaf pad whatever it is uh about text editor it's the gnome text editor i just call it text editor who knows so yeah, it's just a regular plain text editor uh you don't have vim or, or vi i don't know maybe they have vi uh install it because i think vi comes installed out of the boot in all linux distros but so it's got calculator and then of course you can take your tour and then of course it uses a standard gnome terminal for disk utilities the coolest tool that they have is their disk 
uh, GNOME discs. I use it a lot. I like it, you know, because when you have a disc, like in this here, there's a lot of options that you can do. Like you can edit mount options, encryption options. You can do all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, it, it's a pretty powerful tool. A lot like Gparted. Most people, you know, uh, uh, use the old school Gparted that's been around since forever. And then GNOME Disk is a more modernized version of it. So that is a wonderful tool that you could use in and of itself um, that I definitely recommend. Uh so they have that, and then, of course, uh, they have their key ring, their passwords and keys, which I don't know why that's opening. I already closed it. Uh, but anyhow, so they have that. Then they have their characters. Where you can select characters, emoji characters and stuff, as you can see. Um, so, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's another immutable distro. The purpose of is mainly for developers. Is it going to be something that uh, people are are going to you know use a lot of? I don't know. I mean, I guess you can use it if you like. If you prefer using flat packs and you want the stability of of the GNOME desktop environment uh, and it's their their standard OS, and once it's up and running and working completely well, then maybe yeah, you can use it. If this is the way it is and the way they're going to keep it and they're not going to add much more to it, it's going to be very plain and you're going to be reliant on a lot of flat packs to do a lot of things. If you're a developer, then this is it for you, of course, so you can develop, you know, apps and tools and stuff for GNOME. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, same as Vanilla OS. Like I said, and the other ones that, that I that I mentioned, I think there's another one coming out, Blend OS 2. That one is another one that's being done by uh, the same kid that did Ubuntu. It's going to be, uh, you know, an immutable version. Uh, I, I, I think it's an Ubuntu-based one. I'm not sure, but it promises also to supposedly include every package manager out there or like the AUR package manager, all the other ones that I, I don't know, man, it's getting, that one's going to be kind of, I think the, the most interesting part about that is a package manager system. How does it going to use all those package managers and how is it going to function well? And I, I, I don't know, but either way, um, it is what it is. So guys, Tell me what you think about immutable operating systems, maybe about Blend OS, and what you think about it using in its package manager format. Uh, leave a comment down below uh, talking about those things. Also, don't forget to do the join button, uh, the notification button, which I think if you join, you get notified automatically of all the new stuff that I'm that I, content that I'm creating. And if not, at the very least, hit the subscribe button and. Uh, you guys keep doing what you do. Keep on Linuxing. Stay safe. Be blessed and have a great day. Now, before I go, I'd like to say thank you to a couple of special people. They are my Patreons, Brian Bomarito and Mieslav Kraleza. They keep this channel going. They keep the lights on. Uh, if you guys would like to join them, please visit me over on Patreon and join the channel. Or you can just join the channel. Either way, it helps. You guys, I'll see you in the next video.